Okay, the last thing I want to talk about as we look at information technology and the intro to information technology is just to give you some tools so that you can look at some of the um, computer language and some of the technology that's in a web page. So for starters, if you open any generic browser, in this case the example is a Chrome browser by Google, and you go in this case to the, um, the ICS page, um, www.ics.uci.edu, there's actually a place in the menu under, the under View and Developer where you can look at the source code for that web page. And that source code shows you the language, the programming language of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that were written in order to produce that image, that web page that you see presented in the browser. So this is what it looks like when you view the source, at least on the day in which we captured this um, for the slides. And you can see stuff that looks a little complicated. Um, it's a little hard to read if it's the first time you've ever seen it. But it's actually pretty understandable once you understand the different components. Um, and so let's walk through some of those components just so you have a sense of how to parse this visually. Um, so for starters, what we do is we, we do view source in order to look at the HTML. And usually we think of web pages as consisting of three different pieces. HTML, which describes the content of a web page. JavaScript, which describes how the web page interacts with people as you use it. And then CSS, that stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And that describes the way that the content is formatted and structured to look. So there's data, interactivity, and presentation. HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Together, those are used to create a web page. So HTML is the language that fo that's focused on structuring the content of these documents for publishing. So here's an example of a small HTML snippet. And you can see that there's these things in there called um, tags. And tags aren't actually part of the content. They're called metadata, and they're used to help format and structure the content. So you can see in this small HTML document, there's an HTML tag at the top and a slash HTML tag at the bottom. There's an H1 tag at the front of bananas and an H1 tag at the end of bananas. And those tags are used in order to try and describe some of the ways in which the content should be, should be um, presented. Links are a special kind of tag. You're familiar with links. These are things that you click on in a web page that will take you to a different web page. So down here at the bottom, you see a special tag. It's the A or anchor tag. And that has an attribute called href. And href tells you what web page you will go to if you click on the text that's between the two tags. So in this example, you see that the, the word Peru will be shown in the web page. And when you click on it, you're going to go to the web page whose URL is peru.html. Again, this is just an example um, for demonstration purposes. Finally, cascading style sheets are a way of efficiently applying visual styles to text so that fonts, colors, layouts um, are the same for all of the pages in a collection of web pages. So if you have many web pages on one uh, domain and you want them all to look the same, you might use one set of cascading style sheets to describe the look and feel of your website. JavaScript is a language that was invented to manipulate data that's in an HTML page, and this allows you to add interactivity to a web page so that it does things when you click on it. So when you click on a button, things happen. When you hover over things, things happen. Um, and increasingly, we're seeing JavaScript not being used just in web pages, but being used in other kinds of computing environments, in particular, uh, something called Node.js. If you're interested in learning more about that, that's something that you could look up online. That's an environment that uses JavaScript that's not in a web page. So the last thing, the last concept that we want to communicate to you um, in this series of lectures is the idea of open source software. Open source software is a special kind of software. And so the picture here um, on, my, on the side shows a number of different projects, some of which may, you may be familiar with, some of which may be a little bit more um, obscure. But these are all software projects that have agreed or somehow support the uh, sharing of the software and the code that's used to create the system um, with each other. Now, it's not the case that everyone has to share the software that they write. If you do share the software that you write and you allow other people to use it and to build on it, then that's called open source software. Source code are those instructions, those, programmer, those programs that you write. That's called source code. Those source code is compiled by compilers into programs or apps. If you allow other programmers to use your source code, so if you share your source code, then that's called open source software. 
And open source programmers are, are usually not motivated by selling their programs. Usually they're motivated um, by other things. They tend to give it away for free so that people can use it, or maybe they want to make money on their software in other ways. For example, providing service and maintenance for the software instead of selling the software as, um, as an object in and of itself. So for example, Microsoft Word is an example of closed source software. You can't get this software associated with Microsoft Word. Um, if you think about the Apache web server, the Apache web server is open source software. You can go look at that software uh, source code if you'd like. Okay, so in conclusion, technology is made by people. People like you, people who want to change the world using information technology. And a high level process of how you create software is at first you decide what you want. How do you want the world to change? What do you want to do with your computer? Decide that first. Next, you need to decide where it should work. What hardware, what environments, what operating systems, what phone, what people, what infrastructure are you going to work with? Then you need to learn the programming languages that are associated with that environment, um, that digital location. Then you need to learn and write the source code that's associated with what it was you wanted to make. You need to compile and package the source code into an application or a program. Then you need to give it to people somehow through an app store or through email or through a website. And then people run that source code. And then typically we think of this as an iterative process. So that when people run it, they may find that you made mistakes in your source code called bugs. And then you correct the bugs and you send out the software again. So that's it. Hope that is enough that we can have a good conversation about the way we can use information technology uh, to change the world. Thank you.